All right, guys, my name is James Hall. I'm editor of Bassmaster Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you all to the final day press conference of the 2024 Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic presented by Jockey Outdoors. And it was an amazing, amazing event on all sides, from the expo to the competition. And so we are so proud uh, to have our top six. Our, our, our winner is going to come out in just a second uh, and let these guys explain how they did what they did. So I know the first question is always going to be lure, tackle, rod, and reel. So let's start over here on the end with Lee and slide this way and let the press know what you used to catch a fish and how you caught them. Like the whole setup or just baits? No, I do the whole setup. Okay, uh, primarily I caught them on three different baits. Uh, six cents hybrid jig, green pumpkin blue, with a net bait pocket slim. Um, I was throwing that on 20 pound sunline shooter uh, with a Halo HFX 7.3 medium heavy rod. That was uh, one bait right there. Then second, I was throwing a square bill, a six cents crush 50X, just a square bill, a shad color. It's called Shad Scales. I was throwing it on 16 pound Sunline Sniper with the Halo HFX seven foot medium cranking rod. Uh, Gamagatsu EWGs on that one. And then my third and primary bait that I caught the most fish on was a six inch pressure crank bait. It's a flat side, it's called a PD4. Uh, it's just a little four foot diving flat side from six cents. Uh, it's silent. I was throwing brown eye and wild lava crawl were the two colors. Uh, just Gamagatsu EWGs on them. 12 pound, 12 pound Sunline Sniper and the same rod as a square bill. Halo HFX seven foot medium cranking rod. Those are my three primary setups. All right, thank you, Corey. Uh, mostly, I did most of my work on uh, kind of similar to Lee, um, the six cents PD4. Um, I used probably four different colors, um, match that up with the Tatula 7.2 uh, glass cranking rod, Brent Ayler designed that one, uh, 12 pound Seaguar Tatsu on that, and uh, the rest of my fish came on a, a six cents hybrid jig, um, used multiple trailers on the back, um, used a bongo quite a bit on the back of that one. I uh, used my uh, 7.5 Daiwa Tattoo Elite small jig rod that I designed, 22-pound uh, Tatsu and 20-pound Tatsu. I had uh, three-quarters and a half-ounce jig, and uh, that's pretty much what I caught all my fish on this week. Uh, Jay? So I had two primary baits this week. Uh, I was using a jerk bait and a jig. On my jerk bait, I was using the, it was a KVD Elite jerk bait, the 300 and the new colors they have out. Um, color didn't seem to matter too much. Um, we had one that was kind of more of a translucent white seemed to be the deal out there. Um, as far as the jig goes, I used a, sh or, sorry, let's get to the setup of the jerk bait. Um, custom light rod, um, new from Lou's, six foot 10 inch, or sorry, it's six foot eight inch. It's actually the jerk bait rod. Uh, it's a jerk bait slash top water rod is basically what it's for. Um, 12 pound Tatsu paired up with a custom pro 7.5 to 1, um, lose reel, bait casting reel. Uh, that was a setup for the jerk bait. And then for the jig, I was using a 3A sound structure jig in Blue Craw, paired with a Blue Craw Menace trailer, um, four inch Menace trailer. Uh, for the rod, I was using a seven foot lose Pro TI, paired up with the same custom, uh, custom Pro bait casting reel. Um, 17 pound Invisex on that jig, um, that was mainly what I pretty much used the rest of the entire tournament and what I caught my weight on was the jig. Yeah, so I had uh, I had two key baits for me as well, um, about the same as these guys. I called them, uh, I called them cranking, um, a Rapala OG Tiny, uh, it's in the number four, and uh, I was throwing a Kusa Special Color, and I was throwing that on a, a Carbon Light from Bass Pro Shops, um, the seven foot crankbait rod they make. And uh, those are those are the new carbon lights. Uh, they're the black ones instead of the white ones. And uh, also, I caught them on a jig. That was my other bait. I caught them on a, a missile mini flip. And uh, I had that I had that one on like a seven four uh, heavy action carbon light. On the jig, I was throwing a 22 pound Sunline shooter. And uh, on the crankbait, I was throwing 14 pound uh, Sunline crank. 
So uh, my primary two baits this week were a jig and a spinner bait, a uh, half or three quarter ounce jig with a crushed city craw, green pumpkin trailer, uh, 17 pound suffix fluorocarbon, and I was throwing that on a 7.3 medium heavy NB from 13 Fishing with a Concept C from 13 Fishing 8 1 to 1 gear ratio reel. And uh, spinner bait was uh, is a bass man, I believe. I don't even remember what the brand was. So it's kind of generic on the spinner bait, but I was throwing a three inch Crush City Mayor on the back of that as a trailer. Um, half ounce gold Colorado blade. 20 pound suffix fluorocarbon throwing that on a 7-1 medium heavy NV with a concept Z 8 one to one reel as well. Perfect. Uh, so now we're going to open up the uh, floor for questions. Uh, guys up here, I'm going to repeat the questions. We don't have a mic to pass around so that our folks at home will know what y'all are answering. So uh, with that said, let's start with Dana. Yeah, so folks at home, that was a great question. It was a very long drive from uh, the lake to the way in And uh, we're wondering, how did you manage your time and your rest? Uh, we can start, if, if, if anyone wants to raise their hand to answer that one first, or we can all answer it. All right, Lee. That, that's pretty simple. It's the classic, you know, we, nobody cares about sleep. We don't realize we're tired. We don't realize it until tomorrow or tonight. And that's true, you know. Uh, it's just an adrenaline rush for 10 days or however long we're here so no sleep you know it's just part of the game yeah. and, I, and i think a big part of that is is i mean i think i can speak for all of us but we all have friends and family that help out big time with us you know we got friends that drive us to and from the lake and um you know it, it's a long week but uh like lee said it's the classic and um you know sleep's kind of put on the back burner for for seven or eight days yeah, it's pretty tough. I mean, like Corey said, fan, fam, fan, uh, friends and family is everything. I mean, having them, you know, drive the boat, hook up the boat, anything needs to be done. Bring food back to the hotel when you get back to the hotel so you don't have to, you know, go sit down at a restaurant or do something like that. Um, that's key. I will say today, though, this morning was probably the most tired I've ever been. I actually had to drink, like, my first Red Bull ever, and I was bouncing <laughs> off the walls. And Bassmaster history is made again. <laughs> That is awesome. All right, very good. Great question. Uh, next question, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, great question. Uh, wondering about what the newcomer movement means with all the youth doing so well. Uh, when it's a lot, how about we start with the young, one of the young ones? Well, can you repeat the question? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I see primarily, you know, obviously we're seeing the younger generation. We just saw a 19-year-old win the last Elite Series event, or the first Elite Series event, I should say. Or no, that was the second one. Yeah, so, I mean, the youth movement's being crazy right now. I think, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, this and that with electronics and this and that coming out. You know, we have a step ahead, you know, the younger generation and this. But I feel like, you know, over time, you know, this is what you're going to see more of. Um, you're going to see, you know, guys that are going to get up, you know, an hour before it's daylight and stay out, you know, until they, the very last minute they can, fish as hard as they can. You know, they're on the water 24-7. I mean, that's the number one thing is on the water every day, all day. Um, you know, that's what the younger generation, you know, they're putting in the time on the water and it's paying off. And I think to add to that, the younger generation has so much knowledge, at, like, readily available for them. All they have to do is go on YouTube and they can learn so fast. Whereas, I mean, like I consider myself an old guy now and I didn't have any of that. You know, I, I went out on the water, learned everything and everything that I was taught, somebody showed me or we figured it out for ourselves. And I mean, these guys, all they have to do is do their homework and uh, everything is right there at their fingertips so they can learn. Very good question. All right, next, yeah, David. Yeah, 
Great. Yeah, this would be one for all, a great one for all of y'all to answer. Uh, the weather was crazy different. What adjustments did you have to make, and did it affect your outcome? We'll start with Adam. Yeah, um, you know, when the sun would come out and it would slick off, like my fish all seemed to move up shallower, and if we had the clouds and wind, I had to uh, slide out and locate them in a little bit deeper water. So you're constantly moving in and out until you – got those first couple bites and then you could concentrate on that depth range and run it all over the lake. Cody? Yeah, Adam's exactly right. Uh, the first day whenever it was nice and calm and the sun was really shining, uh, a lot of the big ones I caught were super, super shallow. And, uh, you know, we had that cold front and all the wind and clouds moved in and uh, it seemed like, you, like he said, you had to back out, slow down, and, uh, you know, just kind of completely relocate them because, I mean, they would leave. Yeah, so that first day of the tournament when it was super calm, I was actually fishing isolated brush piles offshore. Um, I'm not going to say it was easy to catch the fish, but you could stay, you could stay on the fish a lot easier. Uh, these brush piles were in, like, six foot of water, um, so you could watch a fish on live scope chase your bait where when you had, you know, foot and a half chop, two footers coming in on your trolling motor, it was a little bit harder to do that. That's when I had to adjust, go to the bank, um, go to the docks, fishing in between the docks. Um, kind of like Cody said, the fish had slid out a bit, little bit. They weren't in that super shallow water. They were in that, you know, two to five foot range. So I was just dragging that structure jig literally on just pea gravel in between the docks, um, catching fish on kind of just a nothing bank, um, not even targeting, you know, the specific boat docks. For me, I, uh, day one was kind of my bad day. I started and uh, I fished a lot of isolated brush piles. And um, for me, it I just had a bad day. You know, a lot of fish didn't commit, I lost a few. But um, from then on, I, I switched game plans and strictly went shallow. And I mean like dirt shallow where your trolling motor's kicking up mud um, for day two and then this morning. Um, and then I switched gears and went bed fish. And there's actually uh, some fish starting to spawn and uh, I went and did that for the remainder of the day today. I just fished shallow the whole time and made it work. I didn't adjust any, and I just got lucky. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, next question. Uh, yes. Uh, did I think I would win this Bassmaster Classic? Uh, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to win, right? We all have the goal to go out to win. Um, I feel like it was going to have to be a meant-to-be deal for me. Um, I, I would have had to have had a really good practice, and everything would have had to have lined up perfectly. I lost a couple fish this week. Um, that kind of hurt me a little bit. So, obviously, yeah, I wanted to win here. I won here as a co-angler back in 2019. I'm um, not saying, you know, that I would have won here this week at the Classic, but obviously, yeah, I wanted to win, but it didn't happen. Good. Uh, any other questions for the group? Okay, if not, we're going to do something. Oh, I'm sorry, Louie, did you have one or no? He, he's, hurt, he's hurting other members of the press in the back. Okay, the question, good question. How many How many of you guys relied on live scope? And if partial, what was the uh, percentage? Let's start with Lou. No, I didn't even have my graphs on. I relied on it the first day, and I sucked, so I turned it off and went shallow the rest of the time. <laughs> I relied on it the first day. 100% of the time. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I relied on it the first day until... I couldn't see the fish because they were actually on the bottom and they would eat my bait on the bottom. So I never actually saw them eat it on live scope. I would just use it to cast to the fish to make sure I was lining up my cast correctly. Um, so I would say probably like 40% of the time. Um, I actually did not live scope a bass the entire tournament. I was probably 70 30. Uh, most of the time I was using it just to make a precise cast on a piece of structure. Um, however, today, like, I saw most of the ones that I caught. So. All right, very good. Very good. I, I, any other questions? 
Okay, uh, so new this year, we're going to have uh, just a few minutes. If you guys will stay up here, I know there's been a couple of video requests. Uh, we're going to give that for about two or three minutes. So any of you guys that are doing video, if you'd like to slide up here and get those videos done, our champion is going to be coming out in about five to seven minutes. Uh, so once that uh, happens, then we'll escort you all off the stage, and then we'll be talking with our new Bassmaster Classic champion. So those video guys that want to uh, get some work done real quick, feel free to come on up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. I'm proud to present your 2024 Bassmaster Classic champion, Justin Hamner. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thank you all. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> with 58 pounds and three ounces, Justin won uh, the 2024 Bassmaster Classic championship. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up to uh, questions to the crew make sure that everybody's question gets answered and I don't waste anybody's time so with that said who's got the first question for Justin oh maybe Thank you are you done perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go honestly I haven't <laughs> I haven't really even thought about that this much I the only thing that did was drive me to not miss it again i missed it last year and that feeling is really what drove me i mean getting close was awesome i mean that was just such a cool experience i did i was just thrilled to be in fourth like winning it didn't even seem like a <laughs> reality it's just i was just happy to be there but for whatever reason this year it just i don't know since the season started i said i was gonna win the bass master classic I'm sure everybody says that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild. All right, next question. Yes, sir. was tough that was tough um i remember when i was fishing the open i haven't even told this story <laughs> i was fishing the opens and uh it was the james river it was the first year i fished them me and my wife just had her our little girl i mean she was just a few months old and i didn't make the cut at the james river that year I was having to dig for change under <laughs> my truck seat just to buy a cheeseburger to make it home. <laughs> I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> All I know is that I'm crying with you now, too. So. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next question. Yes, sir. It's amazing. I don't, it hadn't sank in yet. I still just don't know why everybody's looking at me. <laughs> 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 Having everybody follow me around on the water, I mean, was nuts. So awesome just this whole week has been it's been a weird weird feeling i mean i said it before god has truly blessed me this week and there's no doubt about it just give me that peace of mind all week i never had to worry well till about one o'clock today and then i started freaking out for whatever <laughs> reason <laughs> but even after that i mean i pulled into <laughs> y'all ain't even seen this yet probably but i pulled into I picked up Robbie Floyd at the bridge right before check-in, and um, I gave myself just a couple more minutes so I could pick him up and not have to worry about being late, and looked at it, had like five extra minutes to spare. I said, hang on, we're going fishing. <laughs> I pulled up on some random dock. I ain't, never, I ain't never fished any of that stuff in Wolf Creek, and we pulled up to the dock, and I threw a chatterbait. I hadn't even caught a fish on that all week, and 
Robbie's like, you only got five minutes. And I kick the trolling motor on high and start going out like, you know, about to pick the trolling motor up. And about that time, one about yanks the rod out of my hand. <laughs> Probably my biggest fish of the day. I don't even know how big it was. I threw it in the box and threw out the little one and big them went. It's just, that sums up my week. It's been awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, any more questions out there for the champ? Yes, sir. I still didn't think I had it at first <laughs> when I caught that chatterbait fish. I mean, I was like, well, that's pretty cool, but I'm still probably going to lose. <laughs> um, <laughs> but after I reali like after I realized what had just happened, I mean, that, that's never happened to me before. I've never been the guy that catches the last minute, you know, cold that saves the day or anything like that. Like, I don't even think it would have mattered in the end of this. Um, we had a pretty good lead, so... Yeah, I just stress it out for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but yeah, that moment when I when I really started to think about that, I think that was when it kind of like I might have just done this. Yeah, Dan. It's been pretty dang good, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> finally got the support honestly where I don't have to work two jobs anymore I can just go fishing mm. that happened you know about halfway through the season last year and dude just having that relief and that stress off of me I mean that's why I, I hope I can say it enough but the people that support me on this jersey there's no way I could do it without them no way yeah Robbie Absolutely not. I I kind of told everybody <laughs> from the when I qualified for the Elite Series that fishing was the thing I'd, I wasn't worried about because the guys I compete against back home will whoop your butt. <laughs> I mean, there ain't no doubt about it. So, um, yeah, and as diverse as everything is back home, I, the fishing was the least of my worries. I just need gas in my truck. I got to hand it to my dad. He's probably pooped a lot today. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Sorry to throw you under the bus there. <laughs> this is going to be the most unprofessional interview y'all ever do. <laughs> Can I have my water and tea? <laughs> Just in case anybody's watching. I really do. I mean, he's the one that he's had me dragging a stupid Carolina rig since I was about six years old out on Lake Tuscaloosa. I mean, that's where it all started, but he's been behind me every step of the way. There ain't no doubt about it. Him and my mom and my wife wouldn't be here without them I mean they gave all they had no doubt it's pretty special uh, why do y'all make no. me cry oh uh, yes <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> thank you <laughs> I caught my fish on a jerk bait <laughs> <laughs>
everything on my boat is i mean dude i have the best garmin is the best i'm so excited to be with yamaha <laughs> dude y'all are freaking awesome my falcon boats i mean the bass tank rigs everything on my boat i know that's done right i'm running the x2 power batteries dude everything in my boat is set up right I, it's just not even a thought in my mind anymore everything's gonna work day in and day out so that's that's just peace of mind <laughs> i don't know that doesn't even come across my mind to be honest all right this and we're gonna have about time for about one more question if there is one Anybody? Anybody? Yes? Yeah, this is actually the first time I've ever even fished in Oklahoma, so I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. <sighs> yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've learned a ton. I I did so much research just watching Jason Christie fish on this lake, Edwin Evers, guys like that. And I think that's why I was so confident coming into it because it reminds me so much of back home, not necessarily like the type of structure and cover and stuff, but the way these fish act, completely different every day. And that is such like what I'm used to fishing. You have to change up different stuff every day. Yeah, I threw a jerk bait every day, but... I was throwing it on bluff walls, lay downs in the backs of pockets, brush piles. Dude. I mean, it changed a lot. And I just threw a jerk bait because I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Evidently. Uh, pretty good at a lot of things. Uh, so what we're going to do, guys, because we do have a champion toast, and uh, we got to get him to it here in a second. But we're going to have, if you want to do some individual videos, we're going to give you about a minute and 30 seconds uh, for you members of the media who want to come up and, uh, and get something very specific for your outlet. Uh, and then if we start a line right here uh, and kind of cue this way, and we're going to run you all through as fast as possible so we can get him uh, to a beer. So you all start lining up right here, and I'm going to let you go after it. <laughs> 